Hello world, I'm LJ and this is LJ Go Sweden. Today it's time to talk about my total costs of buying a Tesla Model 3. And if you're now wondering where is my Tesla Model 3, well, I show you because actually I had this perfect idea to park the car right here and then yeah, talk to you in front of this scenery behind me. However, the road here is very, very terrible and I was thinking, do I want to do it somewhere else? Is it really necessary for you to have a nice background scenery? Well, we will see with this video, but my car is parked right there. I don't know if you can see it. You can also see right here, I'm at the wind park. But now let's talk about my total costs. Well, I have made some notes and I want to tell you, first of all, of course, the big old question, how much did the car cost me. I have not paid all at once. I have decided to go with the privat afbetaning way in Sweden, which basically means like you pay a certain amount in advance, then you have monthly fees for a certain period, and in the end you have a final payment to the bank. And in my case, I decided to invest 150,000 crowns as a payment in advance directly to Tesla and then I took basically a loan which runs in my case for three years and I have a mileage per year of 25,000 kilometers which is very high of course but I was also thinking if I go more often to Germany I just have this backup and I'm planning to not use my car as a daily driver to work because I live very close to work not even two kilometers but I want to go with the car on trips over the weekend and not only 100, 200 kilometers, I want to go further, 300, 400. And if I do this every second week or let's say every week during summer and not as often during winter, I will end up based on calculations around like at 20,000 something. And then I have 5,000 kilometers more. So I think like that is a good idea in my opinion. Now about the car loan. And that is also one of the questions where people would probably say like, why did I do this? This is the worst idea that I could have done doing it because the interest rate is really, really high. I have a variable interest rate of 5.74%, which ends up basically in a monthly payment of 4,511 crowns, which converts to around about 390 euros a month. And I will do this for 35 months now. And in the 36th month, I have to pay 262,000 crowns. And in my opinion, like I have done the calculations, if I don't lose my job, if I continue like I'm doing right now, this should be easily manageable for me. However, if you compare this to the original car price, you can see that this is a lot of additional money due to this loan. Because the car that I bought, the basic Tesla Model 3 in white, no extras, nothing besides winter tires, cost me 516,000 crowns and 229. But now with the bank deal in mind, this adds 54,000 crowns that I pay extra to the bank due to taking this three year loan. Is it worth it? I think for most people it would not be worth it to buy a car which loses value and all those things it doesn't really make sense to especially with the interest rate out of a very objective way but I fell in love with the Tesla brand last year when I was going to the North Cape in a Model Y and I always knew that I want to have such a car and if I would have now bought a used car for like 9,000, 10,000 euros I think I would have lost more money back then if I would drive now an ICE car till I have enough money to buy the Tesla all at once then buying it now and paying a few thousand euros more a few thousand I know it's a lot of money but I think it makes more sense to have it now and I'm not thinking in my head all the time like why did I not just take the risk and buy the Tesla now I'm happy I have the car I have fulfilled a dream this year, not only making it to Sweden, having a job, I also have the Tesla. So that is just amazing in my opinion. But that is the deal that I have made. And now, of course, the question is, how much do I pay per month in total? Like I said, estimate like 4,500 crowns a month to the bank. However, of course, there are a lot more costs that you have to consider when you're buying a car. Insurance, electricity, or so charging, and maybe other things. And because I have the car not even for a month right now, I can just 
predict and also like talk about insurance and things. So in my case, I predict that I will charge maximum of 2000 crowns a month to fill up the car, which is very, very high when you compare to calculating through how many times I would need to charge the car if I assume that I drive 450 kilometers with one full charge. So I have done the calculation. Let's say 450 kilometers is one charge. Then I have to drive maximum 25,000 kilometers per year with a charging price of 5.5 crowns per kilowatt hour. And with a battery, the LFP battery, which is 57.5 kilowatt hours to reach 100%. And if you now do the math and you say like, okay, I have to charge 55.5 times um, to reach 25,000 kilometers and one full charge costs me 316 crowns, then I will end up at a monthly cost of 1,460 Swedish crowns per month, which is like 600 crowns less than I expected. However, and that is important. In my consideration, I say that I have an average range of 450 kilometers with one full charge. Like my trip from Sweden to Germany showed me that this is a realistic assumption in summer. When I'm in Sweden, I could drive maybe like 550 kilometers in summer because you have lower speed limits and you don't need so much um, AC because it's not as hot as here. However, we don't know about the winter yet. So maybe in winter, I will have less range than 450. Not only, I guess, I will definitely have less range than 450 kilometers with one charge. Let's say like 300 or 350. And then I think it will work with 2000 crowns per month. So it's good that I have this, yeah, a bit higher than it is based on the summer calculations. Then, of course, we have road taxes. In my case, the road tax for the Tesla Model 3 is 32.5 crowns a month, so less than three euros basically, which is basically nothing. Then, as I would suggest everyone who owns a Tesla has to do, get the uh, internet connectivity, the premium connectivity, which costs 99 crowns per month, because only when you have this, you can use your Tesla as it's supposed to be. So watch YouTube, watch Netflix, watch whatever, go to the browser, see the satellite view and so on. So this is mandatory in my opinion to have this monthly payment to Tesla. But for 99 crowns having unlimited data, totally worth it in my opinion. Yes, then of course I already said it, the bank loan, 4,511 crowns per month. And then I have the final thing that I have as a monthly cost and that is the insurance. And in my case I pay 507 Swedish crowns per month for a health insurance. So basically like glass damages, fires and a lot of insurance things that are not covered by the new bought guarantee and also the Swedish additional insurance thing that you get when you buy a new car. But 507 is way better than I expected because I was guessing before I really made the insurance deal, I was thinking like 700 crowns. But now having 500, that's good. I saved basically 200 in this calculation. And this ends up in a total monthly cost for me for the next 35 months at least of 7,150 Swedish crowns a month that I pay for the car which hides somewhere behind the bushes. It's a lot of money, definitely, but it's worth it. And I would have bought any other car too. Like that's the thing, I don't compare the electric car to any other car because I didn't have a car before that anyway. So for me, it would have been a monthly investment anyways, either if I have a used car, a new board a burning ICE car or an electric car. So it is for me money that I spend anyways. I have one last chapter for this video and that is called other costs because there are still other things that come up. Of course, we have service costs that I really cannot talk about yet because I had not had the situation after one month of driving the car. But there were other things that came into this whole thing. First, there were certain fees that I had to pay to the bank because they were like, oh yeah, now that you have our loan, we have to charge you certain registrations and I don't know. So they charged me like 755 crowns, but it's only one time, I hope, I really hope. Then 
we had the fees for the Trafikwerke, so for the Swedish Vehicle Administration. They charge 186 crowns in addition to the road tax. And those 186 crowns are basically the sum of the license plate that I have. I really thought in the beginning like, okay, I have to do it myself anyways. Then the car came with a license plate and I thought like, okay, Tesla did it and they paid for it. Well, unfortunately not. I have to pay for it, but the license plate was just like 140 crowns, which is really cheap in my opinion. And then yeah, 46 or something like this crowns for the registration fee. So that is not bad in my opinion. And then we have one other cost that I had to do, which is connected to my trip to Germany right now. And that is the fee for driving over the Öresund bridge and also the Storebelt bridge. So both bridges in Denmark. And to reduce the payment on these bridges, you can basically take like a yearly subscription that costs 555 crowns. And if you do that, then all the bridge drivings you do in this year or like in the next 12 months basically, are way cheaper. So one drive over the Öresund bridge costs me 270 crowns, which is like 500 crowns cheaper than going over the bridge without the subscription. And then the Storebelt bridge cost me 300 crowns. So in total for all the other costs that I had so far due to the car, this ends up to 2,070 crowns, which is already a lot of money. And I'm really curious how much it will be in the next months, years, I don't know, but still I think it's good to keep track of such things, just to never lose this feeling how expensive cars are, no matter if it's an ICE car or an electric car or whatsoever. But that is it for today. Those are all the costs, the payment that I did in the beginning, my monthly prediction and also the other costs that I had so far. Let's see especially the service costs. I'm really, really curious how much they will charge. So with that said, I hope you had a wonderful day. I will now go out of the shade from the windmill, but I don't want to be here too much because I really would get a sunburn very, very quickly. But with that nice view and the nice weather, I hope you had a nice day too. And we're going to see each other back in tomorrow's video. Stay safe, don't get a sunburn and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.